the Arctic. End of the Earth. Time zones merge, longitude begins, and life exists perilously close to death. Survivors of this deadly, fragile world are unique and awesome. They truly deserve their reputation as legends of the ice world. The Arctic, a zone of endless ice and perishing cold. Only the toughest survive here at the planet's bleakest outpost. And even they struggle to stay alive in their hostile home, coping with conditions so extreme that few could endure. In this relentlessly tough world, each new day brings fresh battles for survival. Arctic animals have evolved extraordinary ways of staying alive. the deadly beauty of the North Pole. Here, the planet spins on its own axis, a colossal slab of ice that stretches over an area of 10 million square kilometers, from Russia to Greenland, Siberia to Scandinavia. The Arctic remains one of the most mysterious and least explored places on the face of the Earth. Two almighty natural forces chisel out its rugged features. First, gigantic glaciers, grinding slowly, inch their way across the land, crushing solid rock into rubble. It takes centuries for glaciers to etch their mark. The second landscape artist transforms the land in a matter of seconds. It works not with frost, but with flames and molten lava, volcanoes. Russia's remote Kamchatka Peninsula bears the scars of a particularly violent past. Of the 127 volcanoes here, at least 22 remain active. Kamchatka lies at the confluence of three tectonic plates. As these grate and scrape against one another, Volcanoes erupt above on the Earth's crust. Geysers and hot springs betray the rumblings deep in the Earth's core and turn this Arctic land into air and ice of hissing steam and water. Throughout history, the Arctic has grown and shrunk, triggering dramatic climate changes. A quick rewind through time, back 18,000 years, reveals the turbulence of the last great ice age, a time when the Arctic crept forward to engulf most of Europe, North America, and Asia. Some scientists believe that we're still living in the late stages of the last ice age, and at some point, the great glaciers will once again creep forward. Long Arctic winters cause the surface of the sea to freeze all year. Slabs of frozen salt water grow more than four meters thick, whittled into permanent sculptures by the winds, waves, currents and tides. The ice flows drift clockwise around the Arctic, sometimes crushing into each other to form hummocks that rise as much as six meters above the rest of the pack ice. As winter draws to a close, a polar bear rests near her den, still stiff and groggy with sleep from her long hibernation. She hasn't eaten for five months, but breakfast has just surfaced. In spring, harp seals haul themselves out of the water to give birth on the pack ice. seals live in the Arctic. Beneath the ice, they torpedo through the water with grace and ease. 
Once out of the water, though, they appear slow and cumbersome. Blubber and skin account for nearly 60% of a young seal's weight. When the seal dives, water pressure squeezes out the trapped insulating air. But blubber cannot be compressed, so it keeps the seal warm both on land and in the water. Female harp seals eat little during the 12 or so days that they lactate. They can lose up to one third of their body fat. Because the pup makes such enormous nutritional demands on her body, the female usually gives birth to a single baby. She couldn't cope with any more. The sooner the young pup can lay down its own thermal layer of blubber, the better. To fatten it up, the mother's milk is as thick as mayonnaise. It has an incredibly high fat content, up to 69%. The pup balloons, gaining about two kilos a day, and within a fortnight, it has quadrupled its weight. It is one of the fastest growing of all mammals. At the end of March, the harp seals migrate south to mate and molt. They congregate in their tens of thousands. The pup now weighs more than 30 kilos. It will soon lose its fluffy white fur and grow the waterproof coat of an adult. Harp seals maintain ice holes of up to 90 centimeters in diameter. They use these as access to the sea and also for breathing breaks during underwater fishing expeditions. In the breeding season, up to 40 seals may share the same icy gateway. Below this permanent cover of ice lies a mysterious landscape, hidden by the inky ocean depths. Here, the vast cliffs of the continental shelf drop five kilometers to an abyssal plain, a vast marine desert split in two by a geological wonder, the Gakel Ridge. It is a staggering 1,800 kilometers long. Along the sea floor, hydro vents release gases and water at temperatures of up to 400 degrees centigrade. Strange life forms flourish in the scalding mineral soup. It's a world apart from the frosty surface. It emerges, a harp seal finds itself face to face with the biggest land killer in the world. Polar bears need to claw back the weight they lose during hibernation, so they guzzle as much calorie rich seal blubber as possible. An adult male can weigh up to 600 kilos. It can live for 30 years and can consume up to 45 kilograms of meat in a sitting, should the opportunity arise. For five long months, the polar bear has been holed up in her winter snow den. During that time, she didn't eat or drink. Not only did she survive this prolonged fast, but she also managed to sustain a pregnancy, give birth, and suckle her twins until they were three months old. Whilst inside the den, the polar bear performs an extraordinary feat. During this time, they're able to recycle their own waste. Using an amazing biochemical process, their bodies reconstruct urea into protein and water. The female leads her young family across the snow-covered land. 
Ahead lie the frozen edges of the sea. While she checks for danger, the cubs wait nearby, taking in the smells, sounds and sights of their kingdom. This arctic wasteland might not seem the most obvious habitat for such a huge predator, but polar bears have made this icy realm their own, thanks to a set of amazing physical adaptations. The fur consists of hollow tubes of colorless hair. Warmth passes through to the black skin, which absorbs the precious heat. After a few months of blubbery harp seal dinners, the bear lays down up to 10 centimeters of insulating fat under its skin. Some sunlight is reflected off the bear's fur, so that it appears white. Precious warmth escapes from just two weak spots its foot pads and nose, the polar bear's Achilles heels. Evolution has whittled these down, so a polar bear's eyes and ears look tiny compared to the rest of its body. Polar bears are so efficient at retaining heat that in summer they can in fact overheat. Sometimes they even have to stop and rest just to cool down. When it comes to staying snug and warm, mammals swear by fur. But some creatures use an excellent alternative. Feathers. The ptarmigan, Ice Age survivor and feathered master of the cold. Its fluffy coat stretches from the end of its beak to the tip of its claws. The ptarmigan's thick feathers make a snug, warm coat that means it loses heat in just two places. Its face and its feet. Ptarmigans molt from pure white in winter to blend in with the snow to a mottled brown in summer when patches of earth appear. In winter, the feathers protect its feet and stop it from sinking into the powdery snow. The days grow longer and the snowstorms abate. Hardy plants begin to emerge, attracting a mighty grazer. Herds of musk oxen nibble the tender new shoots. Relics from the Ice Age, musk oxen once rubbed shoulders with mammoths. Related to goats and sheep, musk oxen have roamed here for 12,000 years. Sharp, stout horns can dig through the frozen ground like pickaxes mounted on a shaft of thick bone. Later, they will serve a more gruesome purpose. Ankle-length guard hairs form a long skirt that shields the muskox from the worst of the bitter winds. Some hairs grow up to 60 centimeters long. Beneath this curtain of tough hairs lies a warm, petticoat-soft wool. Musk oxen are the biggest, heaviest grazers on the tundra. They dine on grass, lichen, mosses, and the other small plants that spread across the tundra. The 
They paw at the frozen ground to expose the vegetation below the frost. They have a hefty diet and travel up to two kilometers a day to satisfy their appetites. Suddenly, they sense danger. The young gallop back to the herd and the adults bunch together in a most unusual defense strategy. As the polar bear approaches, the adult musk oxen shuffle even closer together. The bear faces a solid wall of muscle and horn. Behind it, the youngsters are protected. He could never break through. From Siberia to Norway, where, as the temperature rises, the pack ice begins to thaw and split. This ice plays a vital role in regulating the Earth's temperature. It reflects more than 80% of sunlight. Romance is in the air, or rather, on the wing. Seabirds fly in from thousands of kilometers away to court, mate, and breed in the Arctic. Before long, the waters teem with common scoter and long-tailed ducks, prancing, preening, and performing. Black guillemots, too, join the flirting crowd. While the guillemots take a rest on giant ice cubes, the waters around them boil with courtship activity and frenzied competition. Further south, where the snow has melted, long-distance travelers set foot on land for the first time in many months. Little orcs spend most of the year out on the rough seas feeding on plankton and small crustaceans and sleeping on the water. But in summer, they flock to the cliffs to breed. They congregate in their millions, tucking their nests deep into the crevices among the rocks and coastal scree. Crowds of puffins take up residence in this sea cliff city. The colors on their bills become more vibrant during the breeding season to attract mates. Established couples reinforce their pair bond by tapping their bills together as though rubbing noses. It's early May. Further down the valley, a snipe's drumming courtship call finally attracts attention. Once they've mated, the male will leave. The female incubates the eggs alone in a scrape on the ground. Other bird fathers stick around for much longer. Cranes mate for life. 
The crane family includes some of the tallest flying birds on Earth, standing nearly two meters high. Newly mated partners seal their relationship with a long, elaborate dance. An established couple flash their two-meter wings. The dance will help to reinforce the bond between them. A carpet of vibrant flowers begins to unravel itself over the tundra. The lush vegetation attracts a summer visitor with magnificent headgear. Reindeer. They migrate up to 2,500 kilometers twice a year and can cover up to 55 kilometers in a single day. At the end of winter, herds thousands strong arrive on the Arctic tundra to spend the summer grazing. Like the other unique creatures of this fragile world, reindeer also have a surprising survival tactic. They can live off a diet that consists mostly of lichen. Through their eyes, the bleak ground turns into a banquet of lichen. Two organisms grow together to form lichen, a fungus and an algae. The fungus provides structure, while the algae provides food from photosynthesis. Lichen grow in wonderful shapes, from scallops and ridges, to cups, to bushy tufts. The so-called reindeer moss grows no more than five millimeters or so a year. A passing herd of reindeer can nibble away many years' worth of growth in a matter of seconds. By early June, most of the reindeer cows have given birth mid-migration. The calves are born with built-in growth accelerators. A calf can follow its mother within an hour of birth. And by the time it's a day old, it can outrun a human. It must keep up. The marching herd won't wait for stragglers. early of the herd, the mother and calf must stay close together. The cow will use body language and grunting sounds to communicate with the little calf. Caribou means shoveler. It refers to their broad hooves, which serve as snowshoes in winter, paddles for swimming across rivers, and scoops to dig up food. Reindeer have a tendon in the foot that slips over the bone with an audible click. When the whole herd is on the move, the clicks sound like a bunch of castanets. It's not clear what function, if any, these clicks have. Now that all the snow has melted, the musk oxen can enjoy an abundance of fresh vegetation. The calf looks like a miniature version of its parents, draped in its own shaggy insulating coat. In this relatively mild weather, the coat seems almost out of place. Nearby, the ptarmigan's outfits merge well with the environment. The snowy white winter plumage has all but disappeared. Now mottled brown feathers conceal the ptarmigans among the grasses and stones.
Even the young chicks have excellent camouflage to conceal them from predators. The musk ox calves taste their first plants just a week after birth, but they won't be fully weaned until the age of one. Further south, on the tundra, things are getting hectic. The rush hour has just begun. Anxious parents face their greatest parenting challenge yet. The dwindling summer days mean that they must soon take their leave. Time is running out. Winter is barely six weeks away. By then, each helpless chick needs to have transformed into a young adult strong enough to cope with the epic journey south. The growing chicks will eat insects and spiders to supplement the normal diet of leaves and seeds. In this biological race, only the fittest survive. All over the tundra, hungry mouths beg for food. Snow buntings deal with an extra challenge. Their young are confined to the nest and totally helpless. The adults have to spoon feed them every mouthful. At least young ducks and goslings can scoop up their own food, though they still require constant supervision. The parents work hard to keep their broods in order. The Eurasian dotterel female dodges the hard work by mating with several different males. These devoted fathers then take on sole responsibility for incubating and raising the chicks. For thousands of years, the Arctic has been home to indigenous populations. Over the past few centuries, whaling and mining stations appeared but few outsiders were able to withstand the rigors of the Arctic. As soon as humans abandoned the town, nature reclaimed it. Kittiwakes quickly settled in the ruins. Once again, the small Arctic town echoes to the sound of a thriving community as seabirds make themselves at home. One bird, though, never settles down. The migration record holder, the Arctic Tern. Arctic terns have the longest migrations of any living animal. They travel from the Arctic to the Antarctic and back again in a year, a round trip of 35,000 kilometers. This staggering journey means that Arctic terns chase the seasons on a whistle-stop tour of the globe. The chicks will spend their whole lives in the sun, making the most of long daylight hours at both poles. They break their journey in the Arctic to breed. Both parents help look after the chicks, feeding them on krill, shrimps and sandhoppers. Always on the go, these long-distance travellers will spend less than three months here before embarking on the next leg of their world tour. The abundance of vulnerable young animals attracts one of the Arctic's hunters, a red fox. Not that the blue throat needs to worry. The fox has something warm and furry in mind for dinner, lemmings. And at this time of year, they breed prolifically. Thousands of these guinea pig-like animals scuttle across the tundra.
During its time at the den, a single fox family can get through up to 4,000 lemmings. The fox is not fussy though, and will eat anything it can get hold of. These barnacle geese young would be perfect for pudding, so their parents keep vigil, while the chicks work out what food looks like. At first, they pack at most small marks, but they quickly learn how to tell what they can and can't eat. The reindeer feast on the abundant plant life, storing up enough fat to see them through the lean months ahead. After a long bout of grazing, they settle down to chew the cud, processing the food at leisure. Reindeer shed their magnificent antlers in winter and grow a brand new set each spring. Females have antlers too, unlike the females of any other deer species. Antlers sprout from two knobs of bone on the deer's head. They grow at phenomenal speed. Soft and tender, the antlers are protected by a cushion called velvet. This contains thousands of blood vessels that nourish the growing antlers with calcium and other minerals. The antlers reach full size after around three months. Each year, the owner of the largest set earns himself the status of dominant male. The Arctic summer dwindles and fades. Snow clouds begin to gather. At the Seabird City, thousands of guillemot chicks prepare for the most momentous event of their lives. The time has come to leave the cliffside nests. The chicks will complete their development at sea, but they can't yet fly. So when they launch themselves from the nest, they plunge from dizzying heights straight into the choppy water below. Not all will make it. The Arctic fox will see to that. Because he has a litter full of responsibilities waiting eagerly. Arctic foxes live in dens dug into the ground. Here the parents raise their pups, sometimes helped by female foxes from previous litters. An Arctic fox den can be up to 300 years old, with a hundred or so entrances. Male Arctic foxes are among the most attentive fathers in the dog family. A litter can number anything from six to 16 pups. Today's meal of tender guillemot made a welcome change from lemmings. Arctic foxes keep heat loss to a minimum by having little ears, blunt muzzles, short legs and stubby tails. 
thick fur covers even the footpads, so the fox can trot over snow and ice. Towards the end of summer, the musk oxen prepare for the rut. The males are so pumped up with testosterone that they will pit their strength against anything. Even a boulder deserves a battering. Sheer muscle power also wins the day for a group of sunbathers further south, on the coasts of Kamchatka where walrus bulls haul out of the water. The beach bristles with pairs of deadly tusks. This is a gathering of the heavyweights. A male can be three and a half meters long. He may weigh more than a ton. While in the freezing water, the walrus's blood is withdrawn from the skin to conserve heat, giving a pale, ghostly appearance. Once back on the beach, the warming blood flows to the surface and his color quickly returns. Patches of skin around his neck can be filled with air. If he wants to float in the water, he simply inflates the pouches with air like a buoyancy aid. The walrus's canine teeth can grow to more than 70 centimeters, a pair of daggers permanently drawn. A walrus's tusks are a status symbol. They signal his position in the hierarchy, but they are not just for show. During battles for dominance, bulls joust fiercely with their tusks. The losers may pay a hefty price in terms of deep wounds and shattered tusks. Wrinkled skin, up to four centimeters thick, gives a certain amount of protection against the attack, but sometimes that's simply not enough. This male will never have a chance to be in charge of a harem of females. Walruses have more blubber than any other similar species. Up to 400 kilos of fat, up to 15 centimeters thick, which is why they look so much bigger than all other seals. A walrus, basically, is little more than a colossal lump of lard. By August, the Arctic summer is drawing to an end. Shear waters cluster together, ready for departure. The days shorten and darkness descends as the Arctic sun finally dips below the horizon. Soon, some parts of the Arctic will plunge into 24-hour darkness. Cormorants congregate in the spume near rocks and the arctic fox has turned white again. Herring gulls sit out the first of the snow flurries, along with long-tailed ducks, while a redshank gleans sparse morsels from floating slabs of ice. Winter's arrival signals a moment of truth for the musk oxen.
Let the rut begin. The bull's skull must cope with collisions of up to 40 kilometers an hour. To prevent his skull from smashing, he has an inbuilt crash helmet. At the top of his head, the bone grows to absorb the impact of a head-on collision. Their phenomenal skulls don't come with a guarantee. Up to one in 10 males perish each year. Meanwhile, the Arctic fox searches for a special friend. He has replaced his brown summer suit with a winter coat of pure white, an excellent disguise as he trots through the snowy landscape. Lemmings will spend the winter hidden in tunnels under the snow, so the fox needs to change his diet. It's time to renew an old acquaintance. The fox travels extensively in search of his winter meal ticket, the polar bear, lord of the ice. Once the fox has tracked down a polar bear, he will shadow it closely, cleaning up any leftovers from the bear's meal kills. Fox and bear, a harmonious partnership between two legends of the Arctic. The balance of nature also occurs here on a far grander scale. The polar ice caps perform a vital role, that of global thermostat. Since the Earth's atmosphere first formed, the poles have shaped the climate in two ways. First, they act like colossal ice cubes, storing most of the Earth's fresh water. Second, the polar ice caps protect the Earth from the fiery sun. A layer of ozone gas absorbs most of the sun's dangerous UV rays, and most of those that get through bounce off the glowing shield of ice. So the ice caps protect the planet and keep the Earth's temperature in check. They play a key part in the Earth's delicately balanced ecosystem. But experiments conducted at research centers in the Arctic reveal some interesting facts. It is now believed that conditions in the Arctic are shifting. But the reasons behind temperature change and its effect on the environment remain unclear. But one thing that is clear is that the Arctic temperature is warming. Some scientists believe that a continued increase in temperature could have a detrimental effect on the planet. It may be that human activity is behind these changes. By releasing harmful gases into the atmosphere, we have contributed to the erosion of the ozone layer, and some argue that as a result, the ice caps are shrinking at an alarming rate. So far, the planet's largest unspoilt wilderness has escaped the destructive forces of humankind. Its awesome inhabitants endure some of the harshest conditions on Earth. But unless we protect their icy homeland, many experts believe that they could perish and become extinct. Winter is just around the corner. When the sea freezes over once again, these adolescent cubs will venture out onto the icy sea to feast on harp seals. In the meantime, they patrol the beach for scraps. They play together too. 
But how many more generations of polar bears will be able to mock fight like this? The Arctic faces a desperately fragile future. If we choose to act now, we can, if we want, save the Arctic and its wildlife. The legends of the ice world. It's up to us.